how do you pronounce your first name? So my first name is Toiba. Toiba, how are you? Um, and what's your major? I'm going to interview you. What, <laughs> no problem. I'm a computer science major. Uh oh, I'm in trouble. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just just computer science. Nothing too crazy. <laughs> Sounds crazy, but yeah. You're close to graduation? Yes, I'm a junior actually. So I'll be graduating hopefully next year. Oh, okay. Hopefully in person. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's true. I'm sure. Okay. So um, I'm ready. Are you I ready? Can, I know you're recording. I can send to it and send me the form. I'll send it back to you. Perfect. So, as long um, as they get the right to edit it. That's all now. <laughs> I'm sure Laura wouldn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> so um first on my list of <clears throat> i'm sorry um interview questions is can you please describe your childhood your family and where you grew up and how you came to st peter's okay um did you have benefit of anything that i sent to lauren she sent me a, a questionnaire like this so you haven't read what i sent to her no I'm just making sure I'm not repeating myself or something. Oh, no, I didn't even know she sent you something, honestly. Well, she sent something, I guess, like a little outline of what was going to be asked. Okay. Uh, all right, I'm a little unique in terms of St. Peter's history. Uh -huh. I don't say that with any fanfare. It's just that I was literally born on campus a what? long time ago. Really? Well, well you're familiar with the campus and you know where Margaret Haig, the medical center is. You know where the old medical center, not the new medical center, there's a brand new medical center downtown, but there's within, within three blocks of St. Peter's, there, there was, it's now a big uh, a complex of luxury apartments, uh, Montgomery Street, but that originally was the Margaret Haig, it was, a, it was the original hospital for the Jersey City Medical Center back in the uh, late 40s, 50s, and it was called uh, the Margaret Haig, Mayor Haig. I'm probably gonna give you too much information, but <laughs> it's, no it's problem. Literally, I've literally been around the school my entire life. That's um, so I, uh, everybody then was born in the Margaret Haig Hospital, which was named after Mayor Haig's mother, I think. And so I lived on Montgomery and West Side, which is now a parking lot. Right. If you go down Montgomery and West Side. That's right next to school, too. I know exactly what you're talking about. That was my birth house. It was a gas station. Wow. It was a gas station and um, a Sunoco gas station. I lived on the top floor with my grandmother. It was a cold, cold water flat. So literally, they took me when, when my mother was pregnant. We went three blocks away to the Margaret Hay. And then, <laughs> and then right to the, literally on campus. Now, of course, St. Peter's didn't own that. And next to it was Rankin Hall. Yeah. Rankin Hall was a Buick building, uh, the automobile that they used to put parts together there. Wow. And I have a picture of me like about five years old standing in front of that building with a-, a, a Rankin Hall? To prove that I'm not- <laughs> Trust me, I believe you. <laughs> yeah, I remember, I'm a retired judge so I, and, a lawyer, <laughs> and a graduate. So, um, so uh, my mother was a working mom, uh, working mom, I'm first generation. And I was raised by my grandmother. My mother worked and she worked as a telephone operator and uh, I never knew my natural father. They were divorced very early on before I was conscious, you know, as before I, <laughs> yeah. I was a year old. And so um, I was raised by my grandmother because my mother worked double shifts at the telephone company as a telephone operator. So I literally was, was grew up on uh, Montgomery. On campus. And um, I played there. We used to play softball there when the school was out. They had an old gym with the new Yanatelli yeah, Center is. Uh, we used to play stickball there and we'd uh, sneak into the gym on a weekend and play basketball. And <laughs> but uh, one of my uh, best friends growing up uh, lived on campus, uh, which is where the parking lot now is uh, down there. And his father was the head of maintenance. And so I literally grew this up. Like... I literally grew up with him, and my whole life was spent uh, at there. St. Peter's. Yeah, was playing. And in those days, it was an all-white male school, um, and the seniors walked around with with mini robes. They were short robes, like indicating the back and tie. Interesting. And the military was on campus. ROTC was on campus, 
Um, so I went to um, I went to uh, St. Aloysius, which is down in Lincoln Park. Yeah, okay, I know where that is. The grammar school, and I went there, and um, I, I graduated there. And, and I, when I was about twelve years of age, um, my mother had remarried, and uh, my grandmother and I moved up to the Boulevard, to Highland Avenue in the Boulevard. Which, it's right next to the school. I know exactly what it is. Right, which was great because that had heat because the original house was a cold water flat. It didn't have heat. We had it. You know. <laughs> so it was an upgrade. I, I didn't realize it was a really great childhood. I'm very happy, you know. Um, only child. Uh, later on, I had a half sister who's many, many years younger than me. But you know, you didn't realize that you didn't have a lot of stuff. You just you know, until you get it, and then you're like, wow. You grew up a lot of different people, and um, so. I kind of always was ingrained with seeing a lot of Jesuits. And at that time, there was all Jesuits teaching classes, you know, all of the buildings that you see named probably would taught me at some point in time, like McMullen and all of those. But, um, and so it was kind of always ingrained in me that about this college, even though, you know, I didn't have a father and mother who went to college. So I went to, um, uh, we used to, when I was in the summertime, uh, help mow the lawn and pick up grass. You know, they give you a few dollars to do that yeah. um, on the campus. And um, then um, I was going to go to St. Al, which is high school, but I got accepted to St. Peter's Prep, which is also a Jesuit university. Yeah, I know that's cool. And um, uh, my stepfather, uh, who was Jewish, um, and again, I lived with my grandma all my life until she passed away. In fact, I lived with her until I got married. Um, and God yeah, rest her soul. Yeah, thank you. She was a great birth, uh, not a birthing mother, but just as close. So um, I, my grandmother um, and I moved up to the boulevard. So we thought we were now, you know, they were on the boulevard. I used to watch, <laughs> I used to watch the uh, students come back and forth and the priests. So um, I went to St. Peter's Prep and it was Jesuit. And uh, they really form, formulated me, the Jesuits at St. Peter's Prep. Uh, again, it was lay teachers and it was an all male school. But, you know, it, the really from the people that I met since I was 14 years of age there. Oh, and no, so no. it kind of ingrained in me um, the whole Jesuit tradition, which I had known from St. Peter's, but I had seen them around. And they yeah, now you're really lot. into it, immersed in it. They watch us play stickball or they chase us off <laughs> yeah. the gym or something like that. But you know, it was a neighborhood kind of thing. So um, when I I went up to uh, applying for colleges, obviously the Jesuits were directing me to all of the Jesuit schools. Of course. <laughs> and, um, but I, I kind of wanted, I wanted to, to stay locally. And I, I really always liked St. Peter's. I was very comfortable there. Um, and I guess, uh, I guess seeing them wear these black robes all the time, maybe that's psychologically why I wanted to become a judge at some point in time. I think <laughs> that's Probably. You know, I don't know. So um, I, it was a natural, uh, just to go to St. Peter's was, a, was very comfortable for me. And I was right across the street and I knew a lot of the priests because they knew me from the neighborhood and you know, shoveling snow and that kind of stuff. So and like, so, it was like family, right? Yeah, there. it did. And plus the Jesuits very strong, uh, you know, uh, father images for me. So yeah. again, not having lived with uh, either my original father or stepfather. So um, it was uh, interesting and, and I transitioned into St. Peter's. And when I went there, it was all male. Uh, the ROT was see on campus for the first two years. You had to be uh, a uh, Indian military unless you had some religious based grounds or not. It was all white male, uh, pretty much. Um, and it was mandatory. So for the first two years on a Wednesday or Thursday, I forget which it was, we would all dress in military uniforms, march the whole school down to St. Peter's, through St. Peter's campus, all the way down to Lincoln Park and go down and do three hours of military drills down there. And this was mandatory? Mandatory. Wow. Um, for ROTC. Now, after the third, if, if, as you got into your third year, you could opt out if you wanted to, mm -hmm. or you could stay in. If you decided to stay in, then you signed up for four years, 
and then you had to give uh, four years of your life to the military when you graduate. So um, I don't think I, I, I graduated in 1969. It was turbulent years that I went to high school and college. Um, there was all kinds of strife in the country, much like we're having now. And it's, so it, you know, look back, you know, 50 years ago and we're still having the same kinds of issues. But Crazy. obviously there became, and the, the, the Vietnam was war, uh, raging. Um, a lot of students now were dissatisfied with, with having to be in the military. Um, there was a lot of protests, even by faculty members. You know, it was that kind really? of- Oh yeah, it was, it was nothing violent. I'm just talking Yeah, about but just still like people speaking up. Speaking up. So um, I, but it was a wonderful experience. And then females started to be admitted in, I guess my sophomore year. In my freshman year, I kind of had a life-changing kind of thing because uh, Dr. King came in September of 65 and I was a freshman, it was a hot day and he spoke. That's and it was, I mean, he was just powerful. Of course, it got interrupted to a bomb threat. You know, I mean, it's just nothing changes. So um, <laughs> literally, I'm sorry, that's my right. husband. But the, uh, uh, the, now the school was gradually graduating and buying up more properties, et cetera. So the, the old Buick building became Rankin Hall, which is where the ROTC was. And you'd okay. go down there and one of the classes during my regular time would I have, I'd go down and learn how to put the rifle together and, and learn. Military. Wow. That's like, yeah. what? Yeah. And, you know, I teach a leadership course uh, in criminal justice. And since I went to St. Peter's and had this Jesuit education throughout, uh, part of it is learning the history of the Jesuits, not as a religious based uh, but just the history of the school that you're graduating from. It's amazing, that, uh, you know, juniors. And Most seniors, people will not know saying, that. They'll be well, confused when you hear that. Well, consider it's a leadership, it's a service learning course. And we, we, we have a leadership and the component of the leadership is they do service learning. They go to the boys and girls clubs or whatever group they'd like to go to. They do service hours. They talk about that, we meet about that. And then um, we give them a history. I give them a history of, well, personally of the school and of uh, the leadership uh, and of, of Jesuits and who that statue it is outside of the McMahon Center. Who, <laughs> you know, where, where all this sits. Right. So anyway, uh, I didn't know really what I wanted to be. Um, I didn't have you know, any, there was no police in my uh, family. I was not in the corporation. There, there was, uh, it was just me. And um, so uh, I one day, make a long story short, I decided I was going to uh, visit with a friend of mine and there used to be a municipal court, right? Uh, where St. Peter's McMahon is on Montgomery Street, there used uh -huh. to be a little building, there used to be a municipal court in Jersey City, and a, and a friend of mine's uncle was a judge there, and we went over to see him and watch the trial. Thing, uh, I like a mini internship, and I liked it very much, and um, so I said, you know, maybe I'll do that. I knew I wasn't to be into medical school, so I applied for law schools. I was accepted by a few, and I decided to stay home and go to Seton Hall. I graduated from Seton Hall. Um, and Seton Hall is actually job, not too far from me either. Right, I, went, uh, <clears throat> I used to drive out there, would take the path. And um, so I, when I graduated law school, I didn't know what I wanted to be. I thought I was gonna be in corporate law. But um, again, I had a, a, one of the former, uh, uh, I kept in touch with a few Jesuits and then uh, and some of the teachers. And so um, uh, Father Degnan, uh, uh -huh. was an attorney and was one of the presidents and he was a president and uh, we got very friendly and uh, so I went to law school and I graduated there and um, what did you graduate with um, what kind of law uh, general in law school oh, general. you graduate with a just a general I degree. honestly don't know too much oh, okay. about that uh, in law school you graduate with a juris doctor a JD degree Okay. Uh, you don't specialize in any particular major. It's just law school and you have to pass the bar exam and then you become a licensed attorney in New Jersey. Hmm. So um, I was able to secure a clerkship uh, when I graduated, which was great because it put me in a court that I watched the judge and I was supposed to be in- Like Hudson an internship, there. like you said before. Another an one. internship, but it was paid internship. And then uh, I had, when I was growing up, I always worked. And I worked in a drug company making toothpaste and I worked in a, 
uh, programs in uh, the 60s that they called anti-poverty programs, Operation Step Up, et cetera. And I, was wor I worked that my whole life. I worked on Meals and Wheels. I worked on uh, in a lot of other places, uh, just you know, my supporting myself. And then yeah. um, I went to, um, at St. Peter's, uh, I became extremely friendly with uh, Joe Doria, who later uh, went on, is now the head of education, but he went and became the mayor of Bayonne. We, we were fraternity brothers together. I played soccer in, in St. Peter's. So, you? yeah, I, I did. Uh, wow, I did not know that. Yeah, we were terrible, but we played. <laughs> and, uh, so then eventually I worked uh, all through law school, all through from my high school years to my college years at St. Peter's to uh, law school, I worked for the housing authority in Jersey City in their summer recreation programs and their after school tutoring programs. And then um, I did the internship and I ran into a, a man who I, was a very famous man from Hudson County and famous man in the state by the name of Frank Warini. <laughs> oh, wow. I should have seen that coming. He oh, hired me. So I started my I started my uh, I started in my first three to four years uh, was at St. Peter's. I'm sorry, it was uh, with Frank Carini's office. He was not in elected office at that time. It was right, he had been a senator, a state senator, and then he was going to go to Congress. But I worked with him at his law firm for about three or four years, and it was a wonderful experience. A great guy. I learned so much from him, and then um, I was running the programs uh, as well. Uh, when I went, uh, uh, until I took the full-time job with uh, Congressman, then uh, lawyer Garini, mm -hmm. uh, I took the job with him and then I went to, um, I had worked with the Housing Authority like 10, 12 years, uh, part-time from anything from tutoring to refing basketball games. It was everything. It was, everything. You know, <laughs> so it was great experience because I'm born and raised in Jersey City. And, uh, home, like I said yeah, well, I lived there until like I lived on Montgomery and West. I lived on Montgomery, and then I lived on the boulevard until I got married. And then my wife and I we eventually moved and we wound up having our first child in Jersey City. And then I moved and lived, grew up in Jersey City. My kids went to school in Jersey City. And uh, I went on. And, like yeah. And then I went on to um, St. Uh, St. Peter. I was always there. Uh, when I was studying law school, I would come over to St. Peter's where they had a quiet little library and I'd study there. And um, it was, I was cross street. I, I was part of the gym. I'd go down and the swimming pool and everything. And I uh, was involved with some alumni things and kept very close with a lot of the people that uh, University. were important in my life. In particular. And then um, I um, went on my own. I was a trial attorney for about 10 or 11 years. And then um, Governor Kane was uh, governor and uh, his office asked if I'd be interested in going on the state judge uh, superior court. And um, uh, I loved being a lawyer, but it was an opportunity that I, I had always wanted to do. I was a municipal court judge in Jersey City, very young when I was about 27, 28, for about three years. That was a part-time job. And then part time, uh, <laughs> part -time yeah, judge. And at night court, oh. drunk driving cases, those things, fill in for a judge when they couldn't make it. And eventually awesome. I liked it very much. And it 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 and I was then in, uh asked if I wanted to go on to the superior court. And I eventually went on the superior court in 84, and I stayed there for 27 years. And I spent the last 26 years in criminal trials. Um which was extremely unusual because you usually move around a little bit, but I stayed all those <laughs> years. And one of the things that they did was they started to have me uh, take some courses on teaching. Um, that for was the judges, you know, ethics and things like that. And mm -hmm. I started doing that and I did it for about 20 years as I'm a full-time judge and, and you know, helping new judges come on the bench and, you know, that kind of thing. Little did I know they were preparing me for my second career, which is to be here. And this now 11 years I've been at St. Peter's teaching criminal justice. I came over originally when they had a master's in criminal justice and um, they had asked if I wanted me to come over and teach a course for them since I was a judge and a, uh, um, a graduate. And it went well. Peter's. Yeah, and then it went well. And then uh, about a year later, one of the professors uh, left and I was called and I asked if I would consider coming over uh, I'd have to give up 
the judiciary, but, and I loved it, but I, 27 years of, of, of you know, trying cases, you know, murder yeah, cases, board. every kind of case. And uh, little that I know, I was also being prepared for a second career, which would be to teaching. So I came over and I came over here in 2010 and then 2011, I started full time. That's awesome. That is like- yeah, that's, that's my story I, I, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> you're Jersey so, City born and raised, like you're purebred Jersey City, like I can oh, say. Yeah. yeah, and um, so I, I, I retired young and I'm, I'm over here and uh, lived through the, uh, the, the best of times. And now, you know, the pandemic, difficult. But honestly, having the perspective now that I have in school that you know, very few people really have, St. Peter's, it's hard to compare generations, you know, because history, business history doesn't really help other than to know we've made some mistakes in the past. We try not to repeat them. But honestly, Father Anatelli, the gym is named after him. He was such a progressive man. He, he took flack for inviting Dr. King. Um, he, uh, uh, you know, he was engaging. At one time, they wanted to run to the mayor of Jersey City, et cetera, of course, but he was a Jesuit. Uh, and he was very progressive. And that's how the Jesuits are. And they were great role models for me um, because they were, you know, they were not perfect men. They, they had their flaws, but, you know, just decent type individuals. But now the school is, I think, really what was envisioned to be what the school is, the rainbow of people that are here, you know, uh, the different viewpoints. When you graduate from a, from a, from a university like St. Peter's, there's probably not, if, as long as you've been engaged in something, there's probably not a person you haven't met from any different background you could ever No, seriously. Met. It, it really is. And I have been running the, the criminal justice internship department. Uh, one, of, one, one of my classes is the internship course, three, three credit course, they do 80 hours. Uh, Pre-pandemic, they do 80 hours. Even during the pandemic, they're all over the, the state. That's and, awesome, I didn't um, know we had that. In criminal, well, yeah, I mean, I have, I have, and it's not just, it's not just police. I have so many that have graduated law school that are now, um, I have many that are probation officers, uh, and, and honestly, uh, some of, I get requests from all types of different programs. Please send over some students. Um, your students are the best. We're about uh, to say that because they're coming from you. Well, yeah, but if, if, but if I don't, yeah, I could be all of the things that you, you think you want to be, but if my, if my students don't perform, mm -hmm. you know, not only does it negatively impact on my reputation, but their reputation and the school's reputation. Yep. So uh, we take more mature students, juniors and seniors, you know, that really want to do something. And some will come out saying, I want to be a police officer. My father was a police officer. And they'll come back and send them to the public defender's office. They'll come back and they say, wait a minute, I'll send them to reentry. Wait a minute, there's a whole other part of this, <laughs> right? And they've switched careers. They say, no, now I want to do law school. Uh, or I want to go to the family court, like what I'm doing there. So, and the judges have been wonderful. They, we, we, you know, it's, it's just been... Um, it's just been a wonderful ride. St. Peter's now is, I think, even though, you know, we have all these other issues in this terrible pandemic, honestly, uh, the school now is such, such an invigorating school. That's why we miss so much not being on campus, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, it's crazy. It really I miss is. it I so know. much. You know, so that's my story. Uh, honestly, you can't compare these universities to like anything. The experience is not the same. Like, it's not at all. It really isn't. And, you know, even being one of the problems that we have with strife with the police officers and, and people of color, another, another, another shooting that we just had in Minneapolis. As there's a yeah, I saw Floyd that this Floyd morning. Going on 10 miles away, there's another 20-year-old black male killed by a police officer. I don't know the details of it, et cetera. No. But I, I know that what, what the criminal justice majors that are coming out of here now are substantially a problem and they're going into law enforcement agencies with different backgrounds and historic. changing everything changing absolutely. everything absolutely i mean uh esther suarez uh is the prosecutor of hudson county she's a great friend of the school she, she and i were on the bench together when she was a judge and before i left um you know and she just hot she's hired a number of our students i get i get tremendous reviews from uh 
police departments and from courts uh, and from New Jersey reentry, um, you know, where our students are out there helping people who have been in prison sometimes for 20 or 30 years, learning how to turn a computer on, you know? Yeah, and I can't imagine. Or going to the public defender's office, jail visits, going to the prosecutor's office and seeing, you know, the hard work people are doing. and um, Doing stuff that other people aren't doing. Absolutely. And I'm telling you, uh, I, I get an awful lot of, it's always positive feedback. That's Please great. send us some more. I, I, uh, more of your students, they're great. Uh, and they learn a lot, you know, and they, they learn that it reinforces what they want to do. Or they learn that there's other positions there, not necessarily, you, you know, not everybody, look, look at the graduates we had. Senator Bob Menendez, sitting senator, is a graduate of St. Peter's. University. I did not know that. Bob Hurley, the Hall of Fame coach from St. Anthony's, is a graduate of St. Peter's. Um, Albio Ceres, our congressman, is a graduate of St. Peter's College. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. The, chief, the, the, the uh, Tom DeGeese the uh, is a graduate of St. Peter's College. He's the uh, executive of Hudson County, uh, the county executive. Don Batista is the county council, top lawyer in the county, graduate of St. Peter's. Bill Netcher. Greatness is, after greatness after greatness. Bill Netcher is the, 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 the community college chairman of the board for the last 15 years, graduate of St. Peter's University. Tim Gallagher, retired special agent in charge of Newark, graduate of St. Peter's College, FBI. Um, you've had is that Tim from Campus Safety? Hmm? No, no, Tim, uh, Tim's, uh, uh, Tim Gallagher oh, okay, okay. was a special agent in charge graduate from St. Peter's yes. University. Joe Panapinto, Panapinto Plaza. Yeah. Tom McMahon I know was the point guard. He was the guard on one of the great St. Peter's basketball teams. That's crazy. St. Peter's, right? So, and it goes on and on and on. It's a wonderful school. Yeah. Wonderful school. So, I took one CJ class last semester and it was, I can say one of like the most informative classes I've taken. It's just like, it was, and also the professor was like really heavily based on like our, what on our, our experience. And he always like tried to make us explain to each other, if that makes sense. Absolutely. You know, we try to be very proactive. I know that, you know, we have four, uh, uh, now five, full-time professor we've got about we have over 200 majors and minors but our department has most departments we, we like try to engage the students with the core of personalis you know to engage the entire uh uh person which is what the jesuit mission is and uh most students didn't realize that it's been around almost 500 years most students didn't know that you know how many universities or jesuit universities uh or you know how it all got founded and started so uh and you know what it's i was a um i was a, uh, a trustee for hudson community college for about five years um and uh the students there great students but a lot of them were daunted by the fact that oh I'm gonna go to st peter's i don't know if i can get into st peter's you know that's the the, the reputation that st peter's has in our part of the world here the state mm -hmm. is is wonderful and so now more and more students are coming and yeah. and 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 they're bringing so much more that they're really uh saint peter's is really fulfill fulfilling the role that it's supposed to fulfill. i love I, that I love that and i'm glad that even you that's been here for so long can say that proudly too that like there's been like change and it's positive change right i don't want to be accused of one of the things that I did before the panic uh, was like every year I'd go and I'd speak to the 50, the Golden People Cox, the 50 year graduating classes. Mm -hmm. And they would always talk about how it was their day, you know, and, you, you know, it was a, a male, male school, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, and they, but when I spoke to them, they realized that we are doing things that are still inspiring the Jesuit. Mission. The students may not know that it's the Jesuit mission. I mean, in a, in and of itself, uh, they do. They learn it after they're here a few years. But um, 
the, the school is turning out a, a more rounded student who has just by the interaction of all of the other communities that are part of St. Peter's. Yeah. You know, the, the acceptance of St. Peter's, of, of, of all persons, to, uh, you know, regardless of their gender or their sexual preference or how they identify. I mean, that's what we're supposed to be. Yes. And that's what we are now. That doesn't and, mean that the past uh, it had something wrong with it. It was a product, the past was the product of what it was. You know, I mean, women didn't get a vote until what, 1920, right? We still yeah. had to pass Civil Rights Act 100 years after the Civil War. Exactly. Right? And, you know, uh, but the, the odd thing that if, if you looked at what was going on in the 60s, uh, in Newark and in, in other parts around uh, the country, there, those issues were not at St. Peter's, uh, at Jersey City, but it was kind of always a had different that kind of relationship. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm very happy that, uh, you know, I've been a part of this for so long. And I'm glad things. that I get to join now. And hopefully in my time, somebody will come back for me. I Asking about like how St. Peter's at my time was like amazing. Yeah. What's your career goal? Um, so I'm actually currently in the graduate program for data science. So I'm trying to, I don't know exactly what I want to do with it. I'm thinking of data analyst, but like I'm not like fully sure yet. It's my first semester doing it too. So like I'm still trying to learn where I really want to go with it. Well, like I can tell you just from the, the criminal justice aspect of it. Uh, that degree and that master's degree opens up an awful lot of doors for you. I, really because, so. I mean, we're trying, even in like criminal justice, you know, every time there's something good, there's somebody's going to try to make it. How do I make this bad? In other words, <laughs> internet. When I look up something now, I can do in an hour, which took me two, three days to do when I was, you know, in college. Yeah. But on the other side of the coin was the end, in the last 10 years of my career. On the bench, I can't tell you how many you know predators uh, that were online and all of these other things, the dark, you know, the Silk Road, the dark web, etc. And and more and more uh, as as this occurs, you know, there's always an element that's going to look for the dark side of that. You always, know? always. You know, but um, so you are you have a well chosen career, and I didn't have any idea. You know, one of the things I tell my students. Uh -huh. Is if you had told me that I'd be sitting here with you in you know, 2021 uh, <laughs> and have you know tried all of these cases, I would I didn't know that when I was going to St. Peter's. I didn't know what I wanted. Exactly. And, and you know, it, life takes its turn. And and educationally, I don't think I realized the true value of what I learned from the Jesuits from both prep and St. Peter's. Until I was my last year of law school, and I realized they taught. I know this. They taught me how to think, how to reason. How to <laughs> yeah, like this is like wait, I already know this. And, and I graduated in Corso Classico because they took in uh, Latin. <laughs> <laughs> so this is already new. This is not new to me. Like, and everybody's everybody else is like, wait, why do you know this? And you're just like, I went to St. Peter's. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's anything, oh, and I'm you know married, children, grandchildren, so. Um, and uh, I, again, what I love about St. Peter's is the first generation because I realized that the issues that they had, because I, I can't relate it in the same way, obviously, but, but you know, it's not like they can go home and talk to somebody who's gone through the, the college, right? And, and I think that's why as we at St. Peter's or all the professors, they feel it, we're more available for everyone to talk about the things that most of us, not many of us, you know, were born with, the, you know, with wealth. Yeah. So um, I, I think that St. Peter's is really honoring its Jesuit uh, history now more than ever, even though we don't see Jesuits, you know, exactly. like I saw yeah. Jesuits all the yeah, time. You know, half of my teachers were Jesuits at all times. Um, but uh, it's still a very, very uh, great presence in the school. And I, I, that's such a tribute to our president. Um, you know, he has uh, at that traditional life. He's been here a very long time too. So. 
Unless there's Definitely. anything else you want, and if mm -hmm. you have to follow up with anything, let me know. Again, this is not my backyard. I just want that to <laughs> No, I do have a few more questions, actually. Sure, but I did want to mention that, like, um, since I've been here, I know I've, I've, I can say that I've taken at least four classes where we've discussed, like, Jesuit values. Like, even, like, I'm a resident assistant on campus. Like, he, there's a certain board. Um, we do bulletin boards every month, and there's a board we have to do, and we have to incorporate one of the Jesuit values in our boards. Like it, it's, I definitely think they're trying to incorporate it. Definitely. Well, yeah. I mean, the history of it, and the, the, the you know, I mean, you talk about, you know, back in fifteen hundreds, going to China and going to India and going all over the world and winding up in the Mississippi River and and with you know Lewis and Clark. It, it's just, it's amazing. And, and you know, you didn't take a plane then. You took <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> Literally. And when we, uh, there was a book written by a fellow by the name Maloney, who was a Jesuit and left the order. And he wrote it, a, a great little history of it. Um, and uh, I use it as a, uh, uh, one of the textbooks and in the, uh, uh, the leadership course. And I use it also in this um, career course that we have uh, so mm. that they, learn a little bit something about where they've come from. Just to network later on because, yeah, you know. Um, so come on, ask any questions that you want. You know, actually I just read it over and honestly, I believe you answered it. It was um, what larger societal issues have occurred during your time at St. Peter's. You let me know about the um, Dr. King coming in. And I, I think we had that- racial strife. Yes, I think that was a big um, one. And most, most people the, can't talk about because of course there wasn't, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the Newark, I mean, the things that I, that I saw, and yet, you know, students from St. Peter's bus loaded down to Washington to try to, to help out. At the same time, the campus- I did not was, know that. Well, they had, they, they organized these things. Um, uh, you know, many went down. Um, it was not formally, you know, just it yeah. was a group of people was, you know, uh, you, you had, uh, you had um, students, uh, who wanted to come in from other campuses to to try to uh, you know radicalize uh, you know the, the school um, that really didn't work because um, St. Peter's has always been like a working class kind of you know mm -hmm. student that we had when I was going there. Everybody had a job. We had no dorms, you know. It, it, so there was we had a community, but it was more just there was no McMahon Center, you know. It was. Uh, Even now, that kind of reflects the student body now. Like everybody, kind of not everybody, but most students kind of have the same like background or similar backgrounds that makes a lot of people connect. Even with different backgrounds, there's always something you can relate with someone else. But you can oh, absolutely. And you know, living in Jersey City was was a plus to being born and raised there because you know you go three blocks is another neighborhood, four blocks is another neighborhood, um, and uh, it, it really helped me. In, in law school, and it helped me, you know, as a, I was had my own practice for 10 or 12 years in trying cases, you, you get to know how to deal with people. That, yes, that yes, yes, sustain, definitely. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that and when you think about it, most times in the law, whether you're uh, a defense attorney or a public defender or a prosecutor or you're a cop or a judge, you're not seeing people on the best side of things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and, and that can really you, affect people's judgment. And then I guess with you, your background, you like it, it does. It, you're, you, it's like it's nothing to you. It's like it doesn't mean anything to you. Well, you have to in your life, and I say this to you, and I say it to all my students because when I do my classes, I talk more than what's just in the textbook. You try to, you know, and what I'm talking, what I'm saying is, you you never lose your empathy and you never lose your sympathy, but you can't take your problems home with you mm. because you've got to have a door that closes. When I try a case of a, of a man killing his 18 month old, you know, or, or you know, a, a pedophile case or, or a, a murder case of a, uh, of a 19 year old who's uh, abducted and killed, if, if you take that home with you, it's going to deteriorate everything. It, it really is. You don't need to lose your humanity, but there's got to be a cutoff. That's why uh, I, I, when I left the, the courthouse and when I left my law practice, I did other things. I coached sports, I got involved with, you know, other educational programs, uh, because you have to do that. And I preach that to my students too. You, you That's have, very important, honestly. 
and more people <laughs> need to hear that honestly if you from you and they need to hear that like there needs to be that cut off the balance don't the balance yeah well why you know look at the high suicide rate of police officers or you know um and you know people learn from the positives and they learn from the negatives and you know nothing's uh, easy it, it really isn't and i think that if you're not born into wealth um i think you which has its plus and minuses too uh -huh. i think that you know if you have everybody having to strive for something be the first to do something i i think that makes you a that changes you. Person. It sure yep, does. I was just about to say that makes you a well-rounded person. Yeah. It really does because, you know, I tell the students they're going to graduate from St. Peter's and probably, unless they've been a hermit and just go home <laughs> and go back, and go home, go back, you know, they've interacted with all different types of people. And you, you realize that, you know, each person's got to be judged as a person, not because of what they look like, who they are, or, you know, it's just. I like you because I like you. Not because I, I don't like to hang out with you because it, we just don't get along. It's got to be an individual basis thing. You can't be based on you know, slotting into a group. That's crazy. And I have, you know, my children. I have, I have two of my children are involved with social. Work. So you know uh, that and, it's clearly working. Honestly, if no, if there's no evidence, that is evidence in itself that it's working. It just makes sense, but you know, not everybody sees it that way. Well, I think I, I think in many ways, looking back now on my childhood, uh, you know, I think that's why the Jesuits became more and more important to me because they were strong men who um, had a different, a large view of the world, you know, a large view of the world, uh, and they they were a little older and uh, they impressed me. Anyway, <laughs> well, it's a pleasure. Um, I hope you give me a good grade here. Oh, and, trust uh, me. I, I'm so glad I got selected to do you because I, I I appreciate it. Your story is like, I know Lauren mentioned like hypothetical. She was like, I know she did mention like there's someone that like was really close to St. Peter's and like they did this and this. And I'm just like, okay, that's cool. But then like hearing this from you, I'm just like, whoa, <laughs> like this is this is honestly like if you don't have a book yet, you should really. You should really I work have on to it. publish it. Thank you, but I have to publish it on the fiction because nobody would believe what, what <laughs> it. But I, I, I tell you one quick story. My daughter uh, obviously didn't go to a Jesuit school. You know, she mm -hmm. went. To, uh, she went to St. Dominic's, and then so um, when she finally, she, she said uh, when she graduated uh, her, her college. She went to Fordham for her master's in social work and then her PhD. She said, you know what? You were right about the Jesuits. I had to hear that whole time. <laughs> they really are good. <laughs> it says it for itself, honestly. Honestly. Well, I wish you all the best. Thank I you have, so much. I have, a, I have an unmistakable knack for being able to, to know the future. And you, yours is bright. I'm telling you right now. And Thank I'm you so much. I really you. appreciate that. I'm not that. patronizing you at all. And if there's anything <laughs> I could ever help you with, let me know. Thank you so much. I really enjoy speaking with you. I really did. Same here. Really, same here. A yes. Another fine alum is coming up. Yes, <laughs> hopefully. And I'm gonna. I'm, I'm telling you, one day when they come ask me, I'm like, Mr. Callahan was. He he really. I'm gonna say it. Hopefully, when that day comes, I'm gonna be like loud and proud. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be there. I may be looking down at you. I hope not looking up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you take care of yourself. Yes. Thank you so much. Bye. Right, I say hello to all. Yes, I will. Bye. Bye. It's been a pleasure.